If you have any experience at all with drums in general, then you know exactly how bad life can get when your toms sound like crap. Food starts to taste bad, the air around you starts to get stale, you feel weak and sluggish, your self-esteem starts to plummet. So today, we're going to talk about toms. I'm going to give you my top five reasons why your toms sound like crap and how to fix them. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking mainly to my beginner and intermediate drummers out there. Like if you spent under 1500 bucks on your kit, you got maybe two, three years experience on the drums, you still might be wondering why you just can't get your toms to sound good. This video is for y'all, man. If you spent over three grand on a high-end kit, you should have your stuff together already. But if you want to watch this whole video, you can't. So let's get right into it, man. Reason number one why your toms might sound like crap, cheap heads. If you spent under 500 bucks on your first kit, any kind of starter kit that you spent that kind of money on, um, they're going to come with super cheap heads on them. Um, they use these really thin mylar, like really cheap heads. They're just throwaways, really. They just put them on there to put something on there. So they're not great quality at all. They're just really kind of just meant to get you going so you can start hitting on something. Um, so yeah, that's reason number one, man. Cheap heads. My suggestion, um, if, you've, if you're in the shop, you're already spending that kind of dough on your first kit, maybe spring another extra, I don't know, 70, 80 bucks or so and change the top heads. You don't have to touch the bottom ones. Just change the top ones. Because, oddly enough, those thin heads, the cheap ones that, uh, that come on there, they make good resonant heads. So don't throw them out. But definitely change the tom heads on that kit, and it'll almost instantly sound better. Your intermediate kits are going to come with some sort of generic form of a clear Remo Ambassador, just a single clear 10 mil skin. So those should be fine. Reason number two, they're just out of tune. And I know that sounds funny, but you'd be surprised at how many people out there still don't realize that drums need to be tuned. I run into this a lot at churches. And I'm not really making fun of them because, you know, nobody really knows too much. Um, you know, if you're on staff at a church somewhere, you don't really, you're not going to have a whole lot of knowledge behind you as far as drums, you might not know that they need tuning. So there have been cases, man, where, um, where I've heard people talk about buying a new set of drums because they no longer sound good, and it's just the heads. The heads just need tuning. So yeah, don't, don't toss those drums out yet, man. They just need tuning. Calm down. Jump on YouTube, click on this channel, and learn how to tune your toms, and you'll be fine. Reason number three that your toms might sound like crap, old heads. The heads just might be old and worn out. The best way to test this out is to just take a drum key and loosen off all of your tension rods and take a look at the head. If you notice when you loosen the tension rods that your head does this, just kind of caves in, in the middle like that, or there's like pit marks all over them and stuff like that, guess what? This is an old head, and this is what you need to do with it. Once that head sort of concaves in the middle like that, it's been stretched out. You can't really retune it after that, and it's just time to toss it. Now there is a trick, you know, if you want to try it, if you want, you can take a heat gun and, you know, point it on the head and see if you can shrink it back into place or whatever. But I mean, come on, just go out, get yourself some new heads, 
and they'll be fine. Reason number four that your toms might sound like crap, and this applies mainly to like newer, cheap starter kits, again, anything between 200 and 500 bucks. If you have new heads on them and you still can't get them to sound good, sometimes the problem is with the hoop itself. There might be a bad hoop on it. So if you take a look at this hoop here, put the head on there and take a look at it from up top. And if you notice that it's out of round somewhere, or if there's a big gap, sometimes there is, because they put really like super cheap flanged hoops on those things. Um, if it's severely out of round, and you notice that you can see a lot of a gap anywhere along that edge, then the head's not seating properly. And you're not really going to be able to get it to seat properly unless you're, you know, like a serious know-how kind of person and you can straighten that hoop out. Good luck. But, um, but if that hoop is out of round, you might be out of luck. The easiest fix for that is to just, uh, just replace the hoop with a good aftermarket flanged hoop. You can get one of those from Gibraltar. I know Gibraltar. Let me just say this. Gibraltar is your go-to source for almost any aftermarket part that you need for your toms. That's not a paid advertisement. It's just fact. I used to work in a music store and they got everything. They got everything for you. If you want lug inserts, washers, tension rods, hoops, everything. They got all that stuff. So if you just replace that sort of out of round hoop with a better quality um, flange hoop, it should almost instantly solve your problem, especially if you have a good head on there. Reason number five, man. Uh, I should have started with this one because this is a really common problem. So we're going to spend a couple of minutes on this particular problem. But reason number five, man, that uh, your toms might not sound great is the mount, the mount itself that's sitting on the tom. Back in the 80s, when they were making mounts, um, the mount itself was bolted, all four bolts were right onto the shell, and there was a hole drilled behind it. And when you, um, when you put your tom on the arm, like that, it would go straight through the shell, right? And that's how it was mounted. When you do that, it seriously impedes the shell's ability to resonate. Just makes sense, right, when you do that. So they eventually figured out that if there's nothing actually going inside of the shell, it resonates a lot better. So it used to be that suspension mounts were only found on the higher end kits, and then they started trickling down. And in these days, you know, I, I doubt that there's a kit over 800 bucks that doesn't have some sort of suspended mount on there. But these cheaper mounts are still found on inexpensive kits, especially the starter kits. So what happens, and you may have noticed this, if you tune your tom off the, sh off the kit and you get it to sound awesome, you might notice that when you put it back on the kit, it sounds like crap again. That's because that tom arm is now, again, penetrating the shell, and it's not able to resonate properly. When you hold it in your hand like this, your hand essentially becomes a suspension mount, and the drum is just kind of resonating freely, and it sounds really good. But you put it on there again, all of a sudden, there's interference, and it sounds like crap. So the easiest way that you can try, anyway, to solve this problem if you have a kit that has a mount on the shell and the tom arm goes inside of it, the easiest fix for this that you can try is to, when you mount your tom, move your tom out. Say this is the arm. Move your tom out as far as it can possibly go without actually falling off. All right? So figure out the point 
the furthest point that you can take it where you can still sort of clamp it down. This takes less um, sort of uh, stress away from the shell. This is really what you're trying to do, is you're trying to sort of mimic a suspension mount yourself. So move it out as far as you can before it actually falls off, but enough that you can tighten it down so it's secure. That might actually help your problem. Another solution that seems to work quite well is um, just doing a slight modification to your setup. So you go out, just get a couple of straight clamps. Um, you, any drum shop, you can get just a couple of cheap straight clamps. Gibraltar, again, provides that for you. Um, get a couple of straight clamps, take the toms off your bass drum and mount them off of your cymbal stand. So you're gonna clamp one end on to the stand and then the tom goes on to the other end. And then this kind of creates a little bit more of a, a suspension mount, at least more than what's sitting on your kit there. Um, but it, it's gonna allow a little bit more freedom for that tom to resonate if it's hanging off of one of your stands. But the whole idea behind that is you wanna hang the tom as opposed to sitting it on an arm on, uh, on your bass drum. So I've seen that done a lot of times with cheap kits and it actually improves the sound. Now let's say you got your toms tuned up and you kind of get them where you want them, but they're ringing out a little bit more than you might want them to. Pretty easy solution to that problem. You can take a moon gel, drop it on there, or like a dot or something like that. Um, that's one way to do it. You can also get these things called O-rings and just drop an O-ring on it and that will get rid of the excess ringing instantly. Like as soon as you drop it on there, it'll disappear. So there you go, man. Hopefully that's been valuable to you. If these tips have helped you out and your life has improved a little bit, go ahead and share this video. Drop a comment below. Let us know if you have any tricks on uh, getting your toms to sound a little bit better. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you next video.